Hello you absolute legends. My name is Don Cavanaugh. I want to talk a little about how I think this product Lumen works. I uh, heard about this product. I saw a Lane Norton video on it. Uh, he explained about some of the gas exchanges. So I want to talk about that from a chemistry perspective here. A uh, big idea behind this product is that it uses the idea of conservation of mass and energy. The carbon and oxygen that you consume uh, somehow either must be stored in your body or get out somehow. This lumen device, I totally hypothesize it, measures the CO2 and O2 concentration in PPM on the inhales and the exhales. <clears throat> and what it's designed to tell the user is to tell them what is their major energy source during that period of that inhale and exhale. Are they primarily using carbohydrates or fats as their energy source here? Um, here we have the balanced chemical re reactions for the carbs and fats, but let's look at this gas exchange that's occurring a little bit here. Um, considering somebody's set of lungs, and like if you zoom into the lungs, you have the alveoli, and in this uh, packet of air, this sac that, can that takes in the inhaled air, and then you have a, um, a blood vessel that runs like very much close next to it, so close and in contact that gases such as CO2 and O2 can exchange. And their rate of exchange is based on their relative concentrations in that space. So the relative concentration of CO2 here and the relative concentration of CO2 in the blood vessel. If they are equal, there will be no exchange. If, uh, the, ex if the CO2 in the blood vessel is higher, then CO2 will go from the blood vessel into the lung and oxygen that you inhale is gonna go from the alveoli into the blood vessel because you have a lower and higher concentration gradients. That blood vessel eventually carries its weight to tissues. And this is meant to be say like, uh, like just like squamous epithelial tissue next to a blood vessel. And this is like the width of the blood vessel here. Um, again, the gases will exchange based on their relative concentration gradients gradients. If CO2 is high in these tissues, those gases will diffuse and CO2 will go in to the blood vessel, eventually gets attached to the hemoglobin that's in the RBC on the iron atom to be exhaled. Analogously, the O2 that is higher in concentration will flow from one from the blood vessel into this tissue, all the tissues of the body, um, based on these concentration gradients. Oof. The concentration of CO2 and the concentration of O2 can be understood with the balanced chemical reactions of each of those metabolisms. <clears throat> the metabolism of a simple sugar, glucose, with oxygen, that you take in on the inhale, you will produce ATP, but conservation of mass and conservation of mass, you'll also produce six CO2s and six waters. Again, this Lewin device measures the concentration of the gases from your inhale and exhale, not in the tissues or in the lungs. The O2 and the metabolism of fats this is lineolic acid. It is the most common fatty acid in beef, so it's the most pertinent to my diet. Uh, that fatty acid has 18 carbons. You inhale 25 O2s. You would exhale 18 CO2s and 12 H2Os and produce, I don't know how much ATP, but I know. The ratios of oxygen consumed for the metabolism compared to the carbon dioxide that is released from the metabolism can give us an idea of which is being consumed. The carbohydrate, the CO2, that is the product, and the O2, that is the reactant. And for carbohydrates, it is, I can do this math in my head, six divided by six <laughs> is 
this ratio is one. So if you measure the PPMs of oxygen inhaled and CO2 that's exhaled and beep bop boop bop inside the app or the calculator and get a ratio close to one, you could say, okay, this very well could, this is evidence towards being carbohydrates as the source. For linoleic acid, that ratio is 18 divided by 25 from these respective numbers here. This, I had to punch in my, this comes out to 0 0.72. That lumen device, my prediction, and just like again, like watching Lane Norton, uh, it probably has a sensor in there that has some sort of directional aspect to it to know whether it's an inhale or exhale. It measures the PPMs on the in and out for CO2 and takes the difference to understand how much CO2 was produced by the user. Again, it, ha it also has an an O2 uh, PPM sensor that again is somehow directional. It could just be, and to be clear, like to make it directional, it could really just be a sense of baffles that are um, one dimensional. Like they're like, just imagine like V's that are one dimensional going in one direction. It's an easy way to set up baffles to measure concentration with respect to also direction of the airflow. The, uh, these ratios, these things are measured, ratios calculated here uh, by the computer. So the lower your your, uh, this is also called the RER or respiratory exchange ratio. I Googled that to learn a lot of stuff about this as well. But that ratio is indicative of whether our metabolism, whether our body is using carbohydrates at its source currently or fats at its source. If you have any questions, I'd love to hear them. I hope this helps. Thank you.